foreign journalist and author Joffrey Kane has published a book that takes the reader inside the Xinjiang region of China. He says the surveillance and data collection is so intense that people are arrested if someone believes they may commit a crime in the future. And NDD's Jason Perry has the story. Foreign correspondent Jeffrey Kane just released a new book called The Perfect Police State, an undercover odyssey into China's terrifying surveillance dystopia of the future. Kane conducted hundreds of hours of personal interviews with Uyghurs who escaped Xinjiang. Kane also visited Xinjiang several times. He explained what it was like during his last visit in 2017. Really uh, a terrifying experience because um, I, I realized that, you know, that, that I and also, you know, people who I was kind of interacting with, we were all being uh, watched 24-7 by a, a pretty novel artificial intelligence system that was set up by uh, the Chinese government. It, it was called the IJOP. The IJOP stands for Integrated Joint Operations Platform. It's a type of surveillance system used by the Chinese regime. They collect information like text messages, camera data, how much electricity you use, and even which door you use when you leave your house. Uh, you know, when you go into the market, there will be uh, government cameras watching everyone, watching what they purchase. Um, so if you purchase something like a, uh, you know, diapers for your babies, the, the AI system might raise your trustworthiness ranking. Um, it, it says that you're more trustworthy because that means you're a good parent. But, but, you know, if you go to a section like the alcohol section and you're buying, um, you know, uh, you know, whiskey or, or whatever, beer, um, you're you know, your social trust ranking might go down. You might be considered untrustworthy because it means you have some kind of problem or you're just not, you know, you, something's wrong with you. Kane describes what might happen to someone who is deemed untrustworthy. You'll leave uh, and let's say, okay, so let's say you go to the gas station. There will be people scanning their IDs to, to uh, get gas. They scan their government IDs. There will be guards um, surrounding them, watching them as they scan their IDs. And if somebody's ID pops up and says untrustworthy, that's your ranking based on everything you've done. Um, you could be denied gas. You're not allowed to go to the, the gas station anymore and get gas there. And the guards might actually, the police might come in um, and just detain you um, and send you to a concentration camp if your ranking falls that low because, you know, it means that you, you might commit a crime in the future. This label can have immediate and drastic effects. Um, you might wake up to someone who's actually, you know, like a government minder in your bed who was sent to replace, say, your husband or your partner who had been taken away to a concentration camp. Um, and you might, you know, you'll wake up. There will often be a, a camera in your living room. Um, you know, you'll, you can eat breakfast with your children. This minder will uh, ask you questions and teach you lessons and just ensure that your thought, your thinking is in line, that you're not committing some kind of thought crime against the state. He says even though the U.S. has the same technology in its military and police, the data can't easily be used in such extreme ways. That's because the U.S. is not under a one-party system. Kane believes cybersecurity should be a top priority. That's why he stores important information on a secure USB instead of uploading it to the cloud. Jason Perry, NTD News.